Hello everyone, my name is Kendra Von Esch and I cannot wait to talk to you about the Eucharist. Oh my gosh! I only wish I knew what the Eucharist was my entire life, but I never did. I'm going to confess, I was a confirmed Catholic, but guess what I didn't know? I didn't know who Jesus was. I didn't know that Jesus was God, right? He is God. He's not just God's son. I didn't know why he died for us. Why was he crucified? That's so pathetic. And last but not least, being a Catholic, I did not know that Jesus is the Eucharist. That in Mass, this beautiful worshiping celebration, that we are able to receive the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, is that why Mass is so reverent? Is that why people are waiting to receive the Lord in such prayer and worship? Yes! <laughs> yes, that is why! And I am so grateful, thank you God, for opening my eyes to the beauty. I have a little bird outside my window. I don't know if you can hear him. Of course, he's quiet now, but I think that's amazing. The Holy Spirit speaks to me in birds, and I'm not going to edit this out because if you hear him again, I just think it's the Holy Spirit saying, you go girl, talk about Jesus in the Eucharist because it is so important. There's transformation in the Eucharist. Did you know that there's also Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament? That's what we call the Eucharist in the tabernacle, which is right behind the altar in most parishes. And you could walk in and sit with Jesus, be in his presence. There's typically a red candle lit 24-7 to keep Jesus in the light. And then some churches, or it's a separate chapel, have adoration. It's called the Blessed Sacrament Benediction. You can sit and be in front of Jesus for as long as you want. Some places are 24 seven. Do yourself a favor. You can look up masses, confession, and adoration on masstimes.org. Go to the day and choose what you wanna look up, but please, please, please go to the website of that parish and look at the bulletin. The bulletin is typically the most updated piece of information at that parish. Just to confirm, they may not have updated it on masstimes.org. But Jesus said to us, could, well, he said to the apostles, not us, but he really was talking to us through his word. Could you just, could you not just pray with me for one hour? Come on. I am here for you. I am here. I'm lonely. <laughs> Come visit me for one hour a week. And I'm telling you, it's transformational. Just like as a human being, you and I cannot go out into the sun, S-U-N, in the sky, and sit in front of that for an hour and not have some sort of change in us. If you're really fair skinned, you might even get burned. If you're darker skinned, you might get a little tanner. That is how it works with the sun, S-U-N. 
when we sit in front of him for an hour and allow his love and his grace to flow over us, oh my gosh, it is transformational. So why is it, if it's that transformational, that when we receive Jesus on our very first communion, Holy Communion, why are we not saints immediately? Well, we're going to talk about that. Let's listen to Blessed Marmion. How is spiritual transformation brought about? The proper effect of receiving Holy Communion is to transform us so much into Christ that we can truly say, I live, no, not I, but Christ lives in me. In receiving Jesus Christ, we receive him holy, body, blood, soul, and divinity. Christ makes us shares of our thoughts and sentiments, and he communicates his virtues to us. Above all, he enkindles in us the fire he came to cast upon the earth, the fire of love and charity. That is the result of his transformation produced by the Eucharist. Christ is ever living, ever acting, and in coming to us, he unites his members to his own, purifies, sanctifies, and transforms all our faculties, so we love God with the heart of Christ. We praise God with the life of Christ. We live by his life. The soul divine presence of Jesus in his sanctifying virtue penetrate our whole being, both body and soul, with all their power so intimately that we become other Christs. Blessed Columbia Marmion. God has established Holy Communion with the power to transform us into great saints. If we received our first Holy Communion and are not yet saints, why not? The amount of grace that comes about when we receive a sacrament is proportional to our disposition at our very moment we receive the sacrament. St. Thomas Aquinas. So don't you think it's about time that we reverently receive Jesus in Holy Communion, that we truly prepare for Mass, that we read the readings in advance, that we take some time to meditate, and then while we're there, we give ourselves to Him, we fight the distractions, we don't think about our to-do lists, we even ask Mary into our heart. I learned that from True Devotion to Mary by St. Louis de Montfort. It's a beautiful, beautiful Marian consecration. It's consecrating yourself to Jesus through Mary. But in that book, they talk about receiving Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, in Holy Communion at Mass, with Mary's heart, praying to the Father, to Jesus, and to the Holy Spirit to replace our selfish, not prepared, reverent hearts who probably still have some sins on them that we haven't gone to confession for. Again, not mortal sins. <laughs> There's a difference. Venial sins are, you know, the anger and the, and the vices that we have in our lives. Mortal sins are grave sins that we knowingly do, that we know are against God's commandments. And if we have those on our soul, we should not receive <laughs> Jesus. Sit down. Don't worry. No one's looking at you. Trust me. They don't care. Get yourself to confession immediately. And then you are reverent and you are pure and you are clean and you can receive Jesus in the holy blessed sacrament of Holy Communion in the Eucharist. Please, please don't damn your soul by going with mortal sins on your soul, okay? That's actually what you're doing. But if you go to confession and you're doing well, we're still not a Mary. <laughs> we're still not sinless. I actually ask Mary to consume me, to replace not only my heart, but my mind and my body and to be as pure as possible so that when Jesus comes into me, I can picture them dancing in my soul, and I can ask the Holy Spirit to have them form in me even more. 
Jesus and Mary, please grow in me and help me bring you to the world. That is what came out of that beautiful book. Telling you, if you haven't done that consecration, do it. It changed my relationship with Mary and how I look at receiving Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament and Holy Communion, how I approach him reverently, even more reverently in adoration. And we need to share what this gift is. We can refer to the bread of life discourse. This is the difference. This is the source and summit of the Catholic faith. The faith. <laughs> this is the difference between us and any other Christian denomination. And so many Catholics don't know it. They think that they're receiving Jesus in a symbol or that the Bible actually meant it to be a symbol. And that is where the Bread of Life discourse, if you have not read it, please look it up. It's anywhere online. Just say Catholic Bread of Life discourse. I won't read it to you. I'm sure you're hearing it in other videos. But the bottom line is Jesus said, hey, the way to me, to the Father, is through me. I'm the truth, the way, and the life. Nobody gets to the Father except through me. And oh, by the way, you must eat my body and drink my blood in order to have that salvation. And people knew he meant it literally because he didn't say, oh, hey, everyone, I'm just joking, you know, especially after they said, whoa, this is a hard saying. How can we listen to this? I mean, you got to think about the Jewish practices. They didn't have anything touch blood. They're kosher practices. And now Jesus is saying, eat my flesh and drink my blood. That's got to be crazy for them to hear. And so that's why a lot of them fell away. And he didn't say, hey, oh, hey, oh, I'm just kidding, guys. Come on back, you know. No. As a matter of fact, he looked at his own apostles and said, so, hey, guys, what are you going to do? Are you going to run away too or are you going to follow me? And that was when Peter said the beautiful words of, you have the words of eternal life. To whom else should we go? And that was, again, another blessing and grace and truth that came from the Father. Because he didn't learn that from humans. If we honestly knew what the Catholic faith brought into our lives, how the Eucharist can transform us, we would not be able to keep people out of the church. We just wouldn't. We couldn't close the doors because everyone would be running there. So it's our, our job. We are Jesus's hands and feet and voice down here on earth. We need to tell the world of the beauty of the Catholic Church and its sacraments, of the fact that the Bible was, was based out of Catholic bishops. It's on their authority. That 12 apostles isn't by accident. 12 means governing, and we need to have a governing body and a magisterium of the Catholic Church so that we don't turn into thousands and thousands and thousands of different Christian faiths who some believe this, others believe that, and they're changing the rules. That's why Catholicism does not change with the times. That is why religion is important. It's not, I'm spiritual without religion. No, you're, you're spiritual without morality. That's what spirituality is. I don't want to change my life. I want to do everything that I want to do, but I want a little taste of God. Uh-uh. You have to live a moral life. And when you live that moral life, you will find that you will have that freedom from all of that gunk that you're doing today. When you don't do those things, you don't have all those feelings of guilt and shame. There is freedom. There's a reason that he wants us to live that way. And we're going to fall. So guess what? He gave us the beautiful sacrament of reconciliation, confession, where we can be eyelash to eyelash with God. The word cilia is in reconciliation. So think about little eyelashes. And I want to be eyelash to eyelash with God. Always. So I run to that sacrament and Jesus knew what we needed. He lived down here as a man, but he was a God man and he passed us his church, his bride. And it's our job to get out there 
and take courage in the truth that we've been given and this beautiful Eucharist to share far and wide with as many people as we possibly can. It's our duty. We are called to be saints and disciples and make disciples too. We have a big calling. Okay, it's hard to evangelize when you do not have a relationship with God. Prayer and evangelization go hand in hand. No other way about it. Okay, so I have a couple freebies for you. Guess what? Yay! Can't have you invited to a talk and not give you something. It's like a bad hostess, right? Okay, so here is Need a Miracle Now. And I am not sure if the automated link is going to work. So here's the deal. Just send me an email at Kendra at Kendra, Va Kendra Von Esch .com. Put in the subject line freebie and I will send along this massive beginner's guide to prayer. You're going to have basic prayers. You're going to have Bible verses and you're going to have saints that you can pray to who can pray to Jesus intercession. We don't pray to saints. We don't worship them. We don't pray to Mary. We ask them to intercede for us. So we ask them to pray for us to Jesus. And there's a lot of great things in here. There's even the Jesus surrender prayer in the back. That's a great one. Okay. Maybe you're not a beginner prayer, but you're really wanting to get more into mental prayer where you can truly meditate on God's word. This is not new age stuff. This is going inward with God and really understanding and discerning the voices of yourself, of evil, because they come into our prayers, and God. And that is your Master Your Mind Retreat. Again, email me, Kendra at KendraVonAsh.com. I'm having some technical difficulties, and I'm not sure they'll be fixed by the time that you see this, so I will send them to you myself. And in the back, this is why they have to be electronic, there are tons of links for you that I provide that have helped me with my prayer life. Also helping explain the nine levels of prayer and where mental prayer fits in. It's number two. <laughs> We're never going to get to that perfect union with God if we don't start working on our time with Him, which is our currency with God and spending more time and living in his spirit so that we know his will, his voice. And then we just follow it. It's beautiful. All righty, everyone. I love you all. Deepen your relationship with God. Find something more with God. It's so critical. And I can help you along the way. I